Good afternoon. This is Ryan Amato. Welcome to Behind the Business Scene with, with me. <laughs> and my guest today is Bill Bloats. Bill is actually our accountant. Um, Bill is with RLB Accountants uh, from Easton and from Allentown. Uh, he graduated from DeSales University. He attended Moravian College. Uh, and I know Bill's involved in community organizations uh, such as the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Bill lives in Easton with his wife and two daughters. And um, welcome, Bill. Thanks, Ryan. Good to be here. Thank you. Could you tell me more about yourself? Oh, boy. Where do I start? Listen, born and raised here in Easton. I love this town and, and will never leave until they put me in the box. Um, just love everything about the Lehigh Valley. Uh, started my career here. It's rare, right, to be born and raised in the town that you continue to make a living in. So it, it's really a good place to be. How did you get involved in the accounting business? Yeah, you know, great question. Um, I remember my sophomore year at Easton High School, my social studies teacher at the time, Mr. Miller, came into the class and said, class, listen, let's talk just for a few minutes what careers are available to you. And he wrote down the top careers, and he wrote down, you know, doctor, lawyer, engineer, I didn't want to be any of those. Um, and then he wrote accountant. I thought, what the hell does an accountant do? I had no clue. So he talked to us a little bit about each one, and there happened to be an accounting class that, it was the end of my sophomore year, there was an accounting class that was coming up the next year, part of my junior curriculum, and I signed up for it and just fell in love with it. That was the start of it, really. And it was right from there? It was right from there. But I wasn't sure how to get there after high school. So I did not go on to college right out of high school. I, I decided I got my associate's degree not long after, but obviously not enough to, to become what I am today, and that's a CPA. Um, so I totaled in different jobs, started in banking, went into private industry for a few years, actually got fired from a job, and um, found myself unemployed for the first time in my life. And I was only 23 years old and about to get married. Uh, happened to know through my mother who was working for a small company here in Easton, she knew of a public accounting firm doing their work, they were looking for somebody. So they interviewed me and gave me the job. That was back in 1987, believe it or not. Wow. Was the sales university the sales? Back then, or was it still? Allentown College at the time, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah, it was way back. I didn't graduate, let's put it this way, I graduated from high school in 1981. I was on a 10-year plan for college. I finished college in 1991. Wow. I actually went nights full-time for three and a half years and finished it up. It's quite a run. Yeah. But we did it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, uh, I know RLB accounting uh, because I use you guys, but could you explain to everybody uh, what type of businesses you service? what your ideal client would be? Ideal client would, would have revenues minimum about $500,000 on up. I mean, we're dealing with some larger companies uh, on the East Coast, for example, that have over $200 million in revenue. That is not my specialty, of course, um, but that's why we have five partners in the firm right now. It's because we all bring something different to the table. So that's, that's what makes RLB successful, is everybody has a little bit different backgrounds and, and talents that they can offer to the clients. So, um, well, when we started, we weren't in that territory. Um, why did you Some say people I like okay. and see potential, and honestly, it, it, look, it's about relationships. You know, that, to me, that's the most important thing. And if I feel comfortable with this prospect that's coming into the room, that's going to meet with me, and I see that potential, I'm happy to work with them. So, I asked you what your, well, maybe I haven't asked you. So, you deal with a lot of different companies, same as us. And you have you have good with the bad. Yeah. What is your what is your ideal client? What does that look like? You know what? I, as far I, as they're, they're they're easy to work with, they're fun to work with. They don't give you a lot of trouble. Yeah, it's mostly personality. You know, one thing that you'll find, and, and I I first picked up on this when I went out on my own. Goodness, it's it's over. I don't know how many years it is now? Back in two thousand, so it's almost twenty years now. Um, one thing I noticed is every partner in the firm will attract clients that more reflect their own personality. So, you know, my clients are more like-minded to me than they may be to someone else. Um, so I look for personality traits. I look for morals and values in people. And, and I think I've been blessed with the, the innate ability to pick up on that with people. Would you say no to somebody? Or would it, would it just happen? I have said no to people. Really? I have said no to people, yeah. Um, you just know. There are some clients that just don't have their act together, and I don't want to be involved because it's just a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. Right. I don't, want, I don't want to be the guy that gets blamed for their troubles when they don't listen to my advice in the first place. Understood. 
Uh, so we've been through a lot. Uh, we've been through some audits. Uh, well, one audit, IRS audit, mm -hmm. a training audit. We've been through um, another audit that I don't want to talk about. Um, <laughs> we've been through workman's compensation audits. We've been through everything that can happen. What would you say if you could give some contractors some tips on ways to avoid um, the inevitable audit or um, just to make sure everything is, is on the up and up yeah. with their taxes? <clears throat> Good question. Stay organized, number one. You know, don't throw a bunch of crap at your accountant asking to prepare a tax return for you. Stay organized. Reconcile your bank statements every month so you know what, rec what revenue to recognize. If you're receiving 1099, 1099s, make sure you report at least the amount of revenue that's on your 1099s. The IRS is going to catch you, right? Make sure your payroll reconciles so that you're reporting the right amount of payroll. The IRS knows more than you might realize. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client come to me, physician, many years ago and he hadn't filed tax returns in three or four years. And he was trying though, just his, his office was a mess, his wife was running the business office, and he said, Bill, I can't find my information. So I called the IRS and I, I told the agent on the phone, look, we're trying to do this, but we need information, can you give us time? The agent's response was, what information do you need? And I told her. Half hour later, she faxed information to me to help me prepare the tax return. The IRS knows. They know more than you realize. They may not always have their act together, but they're better than you think. So be organized. That's some of the best advice I can give my, my clients. Uh, we try. <laughs> you do. You do. You do better than most, trust me. Yeah. Um, for a contracting company like, like us, what do you think, I mean, we were just going over this before we started the video, are some key areas that can indicate um, strengths and weaknesses in the business that well, they should one, be looking at? Yeah, one of the things you and I talked about was looking at percentages of revenue and look at trends from one period to the next, whether it be month to month, quarter to quarter, year over year. Look for wide variances in your expense areas. It's easy to do, it only takes you five minutes and you'll see things jumping off the page and you gotta ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. One of the biggest problems I find, and I hate to say it, especially with contractors, they don't wanna be involved in the business. You have to be involved, you have gotta understand your numbers. I won't make an accountant out of you, but I'll help you understand. So you know your business better than anybody. You have to be invested in it. The one thing you always told me that drives me crazy, um, but I remember it, is uh, every time I would buy something or hire somebody or buy a piece of equipment, that it was that money's coming right out of my pocket, right out of my personal pocket. Yeah, it's your um, money, man. Right. Manage it. So uh, <laughs> now I have to think about it. every time I, I buy something. Good. In your head, that's scary. <laughs> but it's important, it really is. You have to think of every dime you spend, whether it's on the business or otherwise, it's coming out of your pocket and you don't ever get it back. Right. So be smart about it. And when times are good uh, for contractors and money's flowing in, sometimes you're buying things that you don't even need. Yeah. So if I can be a little voice on your shoulder, that's a good thing. Right. Right? Um, for, do you deal with other contractors? Yeah. Or could. other business people, definitely. Um, are there similar traits that, that good business people have that you've, you've seen? Are you similar seen traits, you know what's organizational skills. Um, I think the, the more successful ones have a, a level of retentiveness to them. Um, they're very much habitual people. You know, they like their routines, like doing the same thing every day because they know what to expect, they know how to manage that, that's important. Mm -hmm. And discipline is important. How about for you? Like what keeps you, what keeps you organized when you're dealing with a lot of companies. I can be retentive. I, I really can. I, I try to be as structured as possible. There are times you walk into my office and it might be a mess because I have five or six things going at once, especially during tax season. But for the most part, I, I like to make lists. I like to be aware of what's going on to be able to stay on top of things. Um, so it's a lot of lists and a lot of routine. Mm -hmm. Again, as a contractor, um, how do you know that you can afford a new hire without really knowing your numbers. Is that even possible? It's not possible. It's not possible. Whether it's hiring a person or the other one I get about Ryan is buying a piece of equipment. You know, I'll hear this that a, a, a equipment sales rep come into somebody's office and say, I got a great deal for you this equipment, let's get it done. And I'll get the call and they'll say, Bill, should I buy it now or should I wait until January? And I'll say, why are you buying it? What do you mean? It's a good deal. Is it gonna generate revenue for you or do you have one now that's broken you gotta replace? If it's not going to generate revenue for you, you don't really need it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So stop and think about it. Same with employees. If you're going to hire an employee, is it an additional employee? If so, what are they going to do for you? How are they going to help your bottom line? I, I can attest to that because uh, we have so much equipment, or had so much equipment, that now we're trying to sell. So if you're looking to buy some equipment, there you go. check us out on Facebook. <laughs> we're going to have a yard sale. <laughs> um, so we've had our ups and downs. So you see them financially. Uh, we started out small with just two or three of us and then grew to over 20, 25 people. Had a great, crazy year and then came back down the hill to, to reality and had some struggles. Um, you don't have to talk in specifics, but uh, yeah. are there ways we could have avoided that? Or is it just a learning experience? I, part of it is a learning experience, right? You had it in your head that you wanted to grow this thing to a certain level, and you're on your way to doing that. I think one of the things you fell victim to, though, was this economy and such that it was hard to find good talent that you could really rely on. And that's really a problem in every walk of life, in every profession, in every industry. Right now, with this economy, finding good talent is not easy. Mm-hmm. So if you've been able to find good talent that was committed to Ryan Amato painting, I think you would have had more success. Right. Uh, we had issues with people you know, obviously yeah. showing showing up all the time. They don't understand that uh, we make money off of their time, their time producing. Uh, they would produce for you know four hours a day and then take the next day off. And you can't man- micromanage these folks. You can't be at every project, right? right? You can't be at every site. Mm-hmm. Why are we asking too much for people to be committed to the job, to show up on time, to work all day, and go home and get up the next morning and do the same thing again. I don't think it's asking too much, but apparently it is. <laughs> with uh, You've gone through this with me. With all the new tax laws, there are, there are too many for me to, to even know. That's why we yeah. hired you. Um, are there a few key ones that you could kind of point out that would be great for um, a small to medium-sized contractor or any business? Besides, I think one of the things, that the, the biggest thing that's important to understand this new tax bill is understanding what we talked about a little bit before, the qualified business income deduction. All right, For qualifying businesses, you, know, you and I talked about taking salary versus allowing profits to fall to the bottom line, and you happen to be an escort. Okay? And my advice to folks is that you don't want to take it all, everything in salary anymore. You want to allow some profit to fall to the bottom line. Maybe if we're talking about an LLC or talking about an S-Corp, allow more profit to fall to the bottom line so you can manage that qualified business income deduction, which is 20% of the profits. That's a pretty handsome deduction. Mm-hmm. So definitely look at that. Uh, the other thing, I, and, and it was really on, I won't say a whim, but I kind of fell into it last year. Uh, individual tax return. Two professionals, one attorney, one physician in this case, one self-employed, one working for uh, another company. Uh, Two professionals earning well over $200,000 a year, together all of a sudden they lost that qualified business income deduction. File separate returns, even though the tax rate's higher for married filing separately. I lowered the tax bill by nine thousand dollars. Oh wow! So you know, if you're not my client, you're working with somebody else. My advice to you is: ask your accountant. Is there a chance I should be married, uh, filing married filing separately? There could be an opportunity there. Yeah, and we review. Bill and I review our our, our numbers, well, hopefully quarterly, um, to look at um, key performance indicators right. and, and ups and downs and percentages. And in the painting industry, uh, materials are a huge expense, well they are a huge expense for us, so a uh, percentage here and there is, is key. Um, I think I've asked this before, but are there any other areas that we should be looking at or a contractor should be looking at um, that could make or break them besides materials? You know, I think that you look at your biggest cost, it's going to be your staffing, your insurances, and your rents. Right, so if you're in a long-term lease, there's not much you're going to do with the lease at that point. But before you enter into a long-term lease, shop it. Right, Understand what the comps are so you don't get into something that's too expensive and you could have been in another location and worked just fine for you. When it comes to staffing, do not fall asleep with this situation. Do not continue to give people raises year after year after year. Next thing you know, if you've got long-term employees, it's what we call a legacy cost. Or if you've got folks that have been working for you for a long time and you continue to give raises to, they are not worth what you're paying them, right? You could hire somebody for half the price, Mm -hmm. but now you're in a situation where they're a good worker, they're loyal to you, and you appreciate them, but are they really worth that much money? So you have to manage those raises. Don't just be free giving raises every year. 
Right. No, I understand. <laughs> um, okay, about Bill, uh, what would you say has been a, a highlight of your accounting career? Like, um, has there been a favorite client other than me? Has there been one favorite I client one. <laughs> that you just love to see walk through the door? You know it's going to be a, a nice visit. It's not going to be a struggle. I have a lot of clients like that, fortunately, right? So that, that's the beauty of my business. And again, talking about relationships, I don't have any one that I really like. There are some I don't like, and that's exhausting. Um, but they may be good playing clients, right? So you don't want to just throw them out the door. Uh, but again, I, I can't tell you if there's any one client I love more than another. Um, and there's probably, I'm lucky that I only have a handful that I would say that are really a pain in the ass. And I don't really want to be working with them. But if they're, if they're good taxpayers, if they're organized, if they're ethical, I don't mind working with them. It just might be, again, a personality conflict that we have that I can work around. That's what I was going to ask you. What, what makes them a bad client for you? For me, uh, lack of organizational skills, lack of timeliness with their information. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that I, often happens when I get a referral, and I love my referrals. But they'll come in and say, hey, Bill, listen, Ryan referred me over to you, and he said, you do this, this, and this for him. I want you to do the same thing for me. Sounds good on paper, right? But here's the problem. I need the client to buy into that program. It sounds good. I'm going to do this for you, but do you really want me to do it for you, number one? Number two, do you want to pay for it? Mm -hmm. You have to invest that time in the business side of what it is you do every day. And if you're not willing to commit like that, you're wasting my time and yours because you're not going to want to pay me for it. You're not going to be happy with the end results. Right, and your service commitment on both ends. Your service is different than H and R Block. No offense to H and R Block. It's the different type of. Uh, it's a whole different. Yeah. Process. H yeah. and R Block continue to do what they do. We don't want the H and R Block type of returns. It's, it's just a commodity. It's not rewarding at all. Right. We like rewarding relationships with our clients. We mm -hmm. like to see success stories. We want to be part of those success stories. What is your favorite thing to do outside of work? Besides spending time with my family? I mean, obviously, I love spending time with my family. I'm married 32 years. I've been in this profession 32 years. Both successful. I guess it's probably not a coincidence. You know, happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. um, love my girls. i got two daughters. Uh, Courtney's out in Pittsburgh right now, 28 years old, uh, working on her doctorate now in nursing. So she's doing well. Uh, works for UPMC Mercy Children's Hospital. She's happy and, and loving life, doing well for herself. My younger one, Sarah, is 21. Um, I lie, she's going to be 22 next month. Uh, down, senior down at James Madison University, studying healthcare administration. So I don't get to see them as much as I would like to, but spending time with them is the best. Outside of that, I love to run. Mm. I'm a runner. I used to run every day. Um, I would put in 30 miles a week without batting an eye. Unfortunately, I'm a little older, Ryan, so I, I've had to cut back a little bit. I've got arthritic knees now. Um, so I've cut that back to three to four times a week and maybe only 15 miles a week, and that's okay. I'm still doing it. Uh, but that lets me clear my head. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my me time. That's it. I need that. Cool. That's what I do, too. There you I go. don't run, but... Well, I mean, listen, whether it's going to the gym or yeah. running, that physical activity is the best thing you can do to clear your mind. Yeah. Love it. What is your What is your biggest win ever? Business-wise, or and personal-wise, like what's your just reflecting back in your memory? You know what? Every business client for me is a win. That's the thing. You know, when I bring in a new business client, it's the art of the kill. I love that. I just love it. Um, so there's not any one that I would say. Um, I'll tell you what. Probably, if, if I had to narrow it down, you know, we started this firm RLB only ten years ago, and I got a call last fall that we were considered to be one of the top firms in the Valley. You know, Leah Valley Business Journal does what they do with the reader's poll and whatnot. Um, and so in those 10 short years, we became one of the top three. We didn't win the award. We're not number one in the Valley. But the fact is we're in the conversation because I'd like to think we do a good job for our clients. So just being part of that conversation, that in and of itself is so rewarding for everybody in the firm. Mm -hmm. so that, that's a real victory for us right there. Well, what about personal? Other than... Yeah, Other than my family, yeah. and, you know what? Every day, honestly, every day's a blessing. It's not always perfect. You know, a couple of the guys at work say, how's Bill doing today? I just look at him and say, never had a bad day in my life. And I really believe that. Listen, things go wrong. You have moments in time that absolutely suck. But I'm still here. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm still here. If you could, let me give the dog an answer for this one. If you could do one thing over, what do you think it would be? Hmm. 
I would have gone to college right out of high school. Yeah. 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 I would have gone away to school somewhere to get that experience. I never got to enjoy that part of it. Um, I got all the work that came along with it. But, you know, there are lessons learned in that. But if there were one thing I would have changed, I probably would have gone away to school. But, you know, I was raised in one of those families where in that generation, everybody didn't go to college. Right? So, you know, my parents just said, do what it is you want to do. So I found my way. It took me long for the most part. I found my way. What did your parents do? My father worked for, back in the day, Scheibel's Bakery, if you remember that. Yeah. He was a root salesman for them. My mom was a bookkeeper type that bounced around over the years to the artist jobs. Cool. But, yeah. Always from the Eastern area? Uh, my family is actually originally from Reading, um, though my, my father found his way here for work. Um, he, he actually did graduate from Wilson High School, believe it or not, <laughs> but he was back and forth a little bit with Reading. Um, but yeah. Uh, you know, again, everybody's in my family, you know, my siblings, everybody's from this area. So, the, the, and that's one of the reasons I love about Easton. You know what I mean? It, you know, it, as parochial as it is, it can be a nuisance. It can also be a blessing. My kids used to call me the mayor of Easton because, it, you know, my wife and I go out to dinner. If you're looking for us Friday night or Saturday night, we're at a, a restaurant in Easton somewhere. Yeah. Just what we do. Um, you know, people say, what do you and your wife do together? Do you have any hobbies you share? Yeah, we go out to dinner. That's our hobby, right? Perfect. My next question is, <laughs> what's your favorite food? You guys go out to eat. What is, what's your the go-to place? And food? I don't eat meat, right? So it's, it's, I, I don't eat that. fish. Okay. Uh, but my wife loves Italian. And for me, food is food. I'm not a big foodie, so we do love Italian food. Yeah. Um, you'll oftentimes find us at Terry's Italian down at Terry's Cafe, Terry's Italian. I don't know the name anymore. Down off of 611, mm -hmm. uh, the Winters family. And there's some TC run it, just a terrific place to have dinner. We've been trying to go there forever. Oh, you got to get there. Yeah. You know what? You get there and you've got your seat for the night. They don't turn tables. You know? mm. And so many people come in, are regulars. It's, it's like family. What is your favorite music? You can just kind of chill out. And oh, man, something. I don't have a favorite music genre. I don't. You know why? Um, I love it all. If I had a, a, a favorite artist, it's Bruce Springsteen. Though he's fallen by the wayside a bit because I don't like his politics. You know, I, I don't like any celebrity talking politics. You don't know any more than I do. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. You don't know any more than I do or than Ryan does. Keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Just go to the voting booth and vote. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I just don't like outspoken celebrities about politics. Just it's a good life. Um, but I do love Bruce's music. Always have. I listen to a lot of country now, believe it or not. When my kids were young, you know, as, as a young father, you're sitting there going, God, it's all hip hop and you know gangster rap. Well, you know what do I want my kids to listen to? Because you have a chance to influence them when you're really young. And when I was a kid, I hated country music. I turned on the country dial, cat country here in the valley, and they loved it. And I learned to love it too. So that's it, and that's it. I'm all over the place. So I over. listen to jazz sometimes. I listen to country. I listen to pop. Same I listen to it all. Yeah. Serious radio is one of the best inventions yeah. ever. I can listen to it all. <laughs> So I know Bill is, is a Red Sox fan, unfortunately. Uh, I'm a Mets fan. Um, and we were talking before this about um, Alex Cora yeah. and the cheating in baseball. So disappointing. And uh, if you want to give your take on that, I, I already heard your take. Um, Listen, I'm disappointed that Alex Cora did it, right? The fact is I'm disappointed he was found guilty of it. Of course, I shouldn't say that he hasn't actually been found guilty for a fight. Basically agreeing to the Red Sox dismissal of him as he did in his statement. So he's pretty much admitting he did it. Um, I was listening to Burt Blyleven last night on, on Fox Sports, and he made the comments that, look, there's been cheating in baseball for a long time, and there's always going to be cheating in baseball. We've always been stealing signals. The difference now is you can't throw up and in on a hitter to back him away from the plate so he can't get too comfortable. Um, I don't like cheating. There's no place for it in, in any walk of life. Um, as a Red Sox fan, I've already been receiving texts over the last 12 hours of people busting me because I'm a Red Sox fan. You know, Red Sox fans aren't cheaters. You know, we just love our team. We're not guilty by association here, right? Right. Um, but it does sadden me. You know, it does tarnish the, the World Series. It does. It yeah. really does for me. It really does. When you think about the poor Dodgers, who have fallen short to those teams over the last few years that were cheaters, Who's to say the Dodgers don't cheat in their own way as well, right? Mm -hmm. This may not be the end of this scandal. You know, there are other coaches or other players who may have been on those teams over the last few years that are ready to talk in other organizations. It could get interesting. Yeah. Stay yeah. tuned to that one. I don't know. I don't know. I think. About How do you it. feel? Uh, 
and it's baseball, so I know there's, you know, you, you want to get the upper hand no matter how you can get it. I, like we talked about, I don't know if, if you're using the new tools that you can use, if that's ethical. Um, well, right, that, that just did, right? The, the tools are available. You know, the, the Red Sox with John Farrell a few years ago with the Apple Watch, they were, he was accused of using that. Yeah. The tools have changed, but cheating's still here. Yeah, that's a big advantage, even though they're still throwing 90, 95, 100 miles an hour. I mean, if you know a fastball is coming, it's a fastball yeah. as opposed to a breaking ball. So I've heard some people say, and eh, it doesn't even matter if you know what's coming. Uh, it matters what's coming if you know what it is. If you know what it is, yeah. it matters because you can get settled. Yeah. Right? And you're comfortable in the box. You know, Preston knows that story, right? You get settled in, in the batter's box. You get comfortable. You can take on any pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I, I can go back and forth with it. But again, there's just no place for cheating. No. I guess my end is Carlos Beltran. We'll see. Um, he was there for all that. Now he's the Mets manager. Uh, to me, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. He can still manage the team. It doesn't affect anything. Right. Um, but we'll see. He might, he might get wrapped up. Of in course, it. what it's done is brought back to the surface the Pete Rose scandal. You know, the betting scandal, right? Yep. Pete Rose, in my opinion, should be in the Hall of Fame. Yes. He was a player. Yep. Right. And I don't like Pete Rose, but yes, he should be. In he the should Hall be in the Hall of Fame as a player. Though. Yeah. What he did as a manager, again, it's wrong. As I understand it, he never bet against his team. Who can blame a man for not betting against his team, right? He always thought they were going to win. There's something mm -hmm. special about that. Uh, again, no place for, for cheating, but... What about the steroids? Where are you at? Oh, man, I've gone back and forth with this so often. You know, think about Barry Bonds. I used to always say, listen, man's still hitting the ball. He was a Hall of Famer before he started you know, injecting himself. It's, it's just not right. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you think about the Roger Clemens, right? He was great with the Red Sox. He jumped ship and started injecting himself again and uh, lengthened his career. Yes. No doubt in my mind. Yeah. Is that fair? You think about the players on the Red Sox or the Astros who think about the Dodgers on the other end who lost these games and players maybe got traded to the Hugh Darvish. Yeah. Think about him, no longer with the Dodgers. If the Red Sox and, and, and the, the Astros aren't cheating, maybe he's still there, right? Yeah. You never know. So it's had an impact. Beyond those teams winning it, other guys had to move their families because their teams lost. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's a tough one. What are you most afraid of? Growing old. Yeah. How about that? Growing old. I'm not afraid to die. Yeah, I don't want to die, but I'm not afraid of dying. i got a lot of life to live yet. The idea of growing old scares the hell out of me, only because I see how people deteriorate. And it's just wrong. You know, they, they keep you living longer, and then they institutionalize you, keep you living longer for what? For what? There's a crisis in this country with elder care, and it's the one area our politicians aren't discussing and should be. If they come up with a real-life solution that doesn't mean big corporations make millions and millions of dollars, I think you get my vote. Mm -hmm. Right? Why not? Um, but it's a crisis. So the idea of growing old does scare me because of how I see people growing old in this world. And it just seems, almost seems cruel. So that's what scares me. Is there one skill you still want to learn? Like that, you know, do you want to play the guitar? Or do you want to play you know what, that's it right there. Sometimes I think, you know what, I should just pick up a guitar and just, you know, look at YouTube and watch a lesson and try. I just don't have time. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's so many other things I still want to do just to daily in life. To learn something like that, I'm afraid I get too damn frustrated because I have no patience. Mm -hmm. That'd be a problem. Yes. Right? How about you? Do you have one of those? Yeah, I would like to learn to either play the guitar or the piano. I have a guitar because I woke up one day and said, I want to play the guitar. Uh, it's collecting dust now, right? It is. I, I, I played the saxophone forever. Oh, no I kidding. Was in the jazz band, high school marching band. Um, it just didn't equate, like, cross over for me on a different instrument, like a guitar. I can play the bassoon. Um, a saxophone. I can so I've heard the piano will cross over. I would I'd like to play the piano or the guitar. Yeah. And my daughter learned piano. My in-laws go out and buy her a really nice Martin guitar because they had heard, you know, it cross over. And she said she wanted to play. Yeah, it's collecting dust. Uh, well, I'll pick that up at the yard sale. <laughs> there you go. One day, maybe. <laughs> what are your goals for this year? Personal and business. Do you have any? Uh, goals personally would be... Boy, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, 
just get a couple of things done around the house that I want to get done. Mm -hmm. um, but again, not the most important thing. I get the rest of my life to do that, however long that's going to be. Um, as far as the business is concerned, it's just going to be rolling out new services, expanding on some existing services, and, and growing the firm further. I'm a competitive guy. I want to keep growing this thing. Yeah. I want to keep growing it. I don't know what the end game is, to be honest with you, but I just want to keep growing. Uh, last year was the first year that uh, I saw something in the single digits in terms of growth, uh, which uh, upset me a little bit. And there are different reasons for it. But I, we're poised this year to, to experience double digit growth again. I can feel it. We got some things in the works. I think we'll be there again. How do you, uh, this is not one of my questions, but how do you find your your new prospective clients? I mean, how do we get referrals to you that are um, worth it? You know what? I'd be lying to you if I said it was anything other than word of mouth. Uh, the thing is that, I'll be frank with you, there are probably a few occasions where a prospect may have left me a phone message. I just wasn't feeling it. I was burned out at the time, and I just let it go by the wayside. Um, so it really is just word of mouth referrals. The biggest problem, I, I just mentioned burnout, going back to staffing. We couldn't find enough talent. We were short of staff. And you know, you find yourself in tax season working 95 hours a week. And look, I'm 55 years old, 56 years old now. I, I can't keep doing that the rest of my life, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to have the support and, and the talent. We've added more talent this year. I think we're ready to go. Nice. It's going to be a good year. If somebody wants to get in contact with you guys, where I mean, obviously they can go online. Um, is there a number that they can call? How sure, sure. You can call our office number, 610-434-7700. Uh, you can find us on the internet, rlbaccountants.com. New website coming momentarily. Cool. It should be up in the next two weeks. I'm excited about that. Uh, you can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. And, and of course, we're also on our Facebook the firm is out there. Yeah, I, mean, I can't say enough good things about these guys. Um, I trust them, obviously. They pay our bills. They, they, they do everything for me. Uh, you've helped us out with things that you didn't have to help us out with. Um, so definitely, uh, that's where I would send somebody. Okay, now you're my favorite client. <laughs> I appreciate it, right? Thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to say? No, listen, I, I love what you're doing here. And again, I talk about relationships. This is one of those relationships I really enjoy because I, I see you continuing to grow, expanding in other areas. That's exciting stuff. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Cool. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming. You're welcome, Bill. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Cool. It's a pleasure.